And we, we don't want them to say that. We want them to say, go do starting strength. Isn't that ultimately what we're Because they're all say? saying strength training. There was an article in the Telegraph yesterday that eight or ten people posted on my board, and I just deleted it. So if you have the match the match. Strength training is better than aerobic. You know, every once in a while, the, the press will get something right accidentally. <laughs> and, and they put it on. Uh, the board, and I just delete it because I don't want to deal with it. It's all fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It's all, that's always what it is. The best thing they could do is say uh, resistance training works. Resistance training is good, good for you. Go find the best resistance training people and work with them. That's the best thing they could do, and not inject any other opinion or or about how to go about doing that. Yeah. Because eventually we're going to have to trust that people will find us, right? Um, if we're doing our job, uh, not to say. Do resistance training, but uh, you know, don't, don't don't press over your head. Don't, 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 don't go too hard. Keep it easy. That's take it bad easy. for yeah. your back. <laughs> do resistance training. Do strength training, but don't squat because squats are bad for the knee. Right. And that that's that's the problem. Is even even when they do recommend strength training, the they get it so thoroughly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That it's not up. a recommendation. You for should strength, strength train, but don't squat. You should right. strength train, but. But don't deadlift. Yeah. You got to get your don't knee. press overhead. That impinges the shoulder. Yeah. People go in with back pain or knee pain, and they're like, uh, "You need to you need to get your you need to get your quad stronger." All right. Well, or your core. Yeah, you need to get your you core get your stronger. Core stronger. All right. Well, maybe I'll go try squats. Oh wait, wait, don't squat. That's bad for the knees. That's bad for your knees. Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of shit. That's right. not well, which, by the way, we've thrown them under the bus. But the reality is, is, most people do squats that are bad for the knees. Most people, in the way they do squats, is bad for the knees. So they're, you know. Their experience with people doing squats probably are, they are bad for the knees. But they probably actually do impinge the shoulder on the press. Do you, so. So do you think it's somewhat of a lost cause then? Yeah, for the most part. We're narrow casting. We've always said that. But I'll tell you, going back to this thing over here, if the greatest inroads that will, ha will happen to this program would happen if the military would get its head out of its ass and show a generation of young men what it's like to go from a 135 pound squat to a 365 pound squat in six months. We couldn't do any better than that because now they know. <clears throat> now they would all know. They tell their parents, they tell their brothers and sisters, people can see it happen. They come back from basic training, 30 pounds of muscular body weight heavier. It's uh, how did CrossFit do it? Because you see CrossFit. CrossFit, how did CrossFit do what? Well, they, I mean, they made an inroads into the military. Oh, they have, yeah. So how did they and they, and pretty much just as soon as they get in there, they get kicked out because you've got units at 50% combat readiness because of training related injuries. Training related injuries. We're all training to prepare for combat, but the training makes the unit 50% unfit for, for, for combat. We've got a structural problem there, don't we? So, yeah, CrossFit made its way in and. They, they, lucked yeah, out with that, they lucked out with timing some. They were kind of blown up in like 2007, 2008. Yeah, you had a bunch of soldiers in Afghanistan. They didn't all have access to barbells. They could swing ammo cans and bullshit stuff. They could do CrossFit in the desert. And it just, there's a book called Learning to Breathe Fire. It's a pretty good book to, about the history of that. It's just interesting if you want to read about how it works. But it came from CrossFitters being in the military, not CrossFit going to the military. No, no, no. Hey, That's this. correct. That's exactly right. That, yeah. It wasn't adopted. CrossFit, was yeah. Doing. CrossFit wasn't pointed at the military at the time. You just had a bunch of guys that were doing a bunch of real hard workouts. Who, you know, like, just like right. people, and, you know, who unit likes... commanders like CrossFit, and they're in charge, so they had all their units do CrossFit. There's a lot of downtime, too. You're in the desert, right? You're like, the thing about war, a lot of times, like all the buddies have, the guys I've, soldiers I've trained that have been there. Like, look, there's times that are like real stressful and real crazy, but there's a lot of downtime. You're either getting shot to death or bored to death. Yeah, you're laying around. <laughs> One of the two. Right? Who's next? Playing, playing with the boys. As far as what? Just the business? The models, or not the business, the model of the left specifically, like the left. Well, we're standard. refining them all the time. So what are the, what are the most exciting or interesting refinements that are coming up? I think the big stuff's pretty much set. 
And the programming stuff that you heard is actually We're approaching the that stuff. asymptotically, too. Sure. We got most of the bugs worked out of it. Yeah. <coughs> we don't hold stuff back, though. Like, we test stuff at seminars. Like, you got the most recent stuff at this one. You guys have the best content in any seminars ever received at this seminar. Because it's, it's the most it's updated the most stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. just it. The next, the next thing is probably going to be, if there's going to be a big change, it's how the lifts, maybe in the way some of the lifts are taught or... Uh, not 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 wholesale changes, but small changes. You know, because as we as we start developing coaches and learning how people who are going to be coaches are are passing this stuff on, maybe some of that stuff will change. Um, but the, the, overall, the model of the lifts is, is at this point pretty damn solid. There's a there's a real advantage. Rip and I were talking about this earlier, uh, um, an hour or so ago, about as Rip built this model. And it's, it's obviously attracted people who are uh, above average intelligence or, you know, we've got a lot of engineers and doctors and people like that that have been attracted to this who are starting strength coaches. And as you take that model and you put it in the hands of those people, and those people chew on it and talk and chew on it and talk, and we go to the coaches conference, and we go to strength con, and we go to the seminars and we talk and we go out to dinner afterwards and we talk. Like, that's great to have in your corner. You got a bunch of really smart people talking about this thing, and so it continues to refine and get tweaked and get tweaked and get tweaked. But and it's been 13 years, right, since you came yeah. out with the first edition. All of that's added up. Like pretty Colin came up with this pretty good little graph of the uh, an analysis of the acceleration during pull model yesterday afternoon. You know, that gets added in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's. You guys help us, we help you. Yeah. One quick question. Are there any tactile cues for the deadlift? Well, I mean, we, yeah, you I know, mean, effective lumbar extension, sure. You know, you saw down. me pick everybody in the room's ass up and pull it back into yeah. tight hamstrings, right? Yeah. Yeah. You saw me do that, so yeah, there are several tactile cues. Train don't line. put your hands under their chin and lift your chin <laughs> <laughs> like you see done on the internet. No, don't do that. Yeah, that's part of the lift. Yeah, I don't yeah, do that. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. So yeah. good. Awesome. Even just the sensation of the bar on your legs is a tactile cue. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just doesn't come as a coach. As an aspiring <coughs> coach, and I'm sure we even see this with new coaches, um, the tendency to overanalyze the lifts. Mm -hmm. Any advice on how to? Well, you saw lifts? there were. I can't remember who I did this with today, but they were. It was one of the pulls. I can't remember if it was last night on the deadlift or that today on the clean. I think I remember it today on the clean. Somebody, one of you people, was fucking around about starting your next rip, and I said, "Hurry, just do." It. I think it was. Did I not do that with you? I, don't know. I can't remember who it was. It was probably John. Maybe. It was probably John. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't remember. But uh, one of the folk, one of the functions of a coach is if you see your lifter overanalyzing, wasting time, thinking about too many things, is to hurry them up. Hurry up the rep. That's one of the functions of a coach is determine if this is is this over analysis or is this benefiting the set yep if it's not benefiting the set cue it hurry pull three two one go yep. and all, all you can do so you're you're at the stage where you know you, you know some of this and i don't know i don't know how many people you're coaching but everything looks like a problem and that might be the case but the, it's not it's not that you're over analyzing it's that you're not prioritizing yep right so so that that's an experience thing Right. So as you as you coach more and more people, you'll you'll figure out what the thing is that needs to be said right now, and typically that fixes a bunch of other shit too. Yep. Right? So it's not an overanalyzation problem; you're always analyzing. It's just it's it's simplifying and prioritizing. Yeah, and we talked about that root causes. Yeah, those kind of things. Yep. So today or and yesterday, um, especially on the squat, and you helped me out with that. I noticed there was a lot of like. I'm super tight, and to get into the right position, you had to pretty much 
shoved me under the bar yep. in that stretch. I can't remember what it's sure. called. Sure, I called the Paul Horn um, stretch. And Brent did something similar with me with the racking position on the power thing. What I wanted to do is, <coughs> you could do that with me, but what can I do on my own for that if I encounter that as a problem? Uh, I think there's actually a few pictures of that in the book where you've got 95 pounds on the bar, and you take your hand right here, and you do like this under the bar, and then you go to the other side, and you do like this, yep. and then eventually you work out this angle so that you're parallel to the barbell. Mm. And that's you know, essentially doing the same thing. You just force it to happen. Mm. Just like doing a Paul Horn stretch is basically yeah. forcing the, the correct bar on the back, you know, and that's it, the best type of stretch that there is, is a loaded stretch. It's far more effective than any type of squat. On yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jason point right there, he came in saying, there's no way I can do this. I've been struggling with this for years. There's no way I can do this. Yeah. And all you needed was a little motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Coming over and yelling at your ass, and sure as hell, you got there because you forced it to happen. But you won't get these positions if you don't force them to happen. And your shoulders won't dislocate. No. Yeah, a lot of times we, we can do things we don't think we can do if we have to. I want pa patients to do this not just from New Year's until March. Right. I want patients, I, I try to mimic the effects of exercise with Adderall and Celexa and, and crap like that all the time. Yeah, it kind and of doesn't work. And I try work, to get patients to, to <coughs> internalize this locus of control that you can have an effect on your life. Sure. And this tr teaches them that. But yeah. Very few people that I work with want to be competitive lifters. But they all need, they all need, very, the, they, they hey, need the things that Jeff, to treat them. Very few of the people we work with but, want to be competitive lifters. But, Very few. But starting strength is built on a training model, not an yes. exercise. You don't. I, I want the day to day. I want this guy feels better. He's able to function as a right. CEO or a contractor or whatever because he lifted that day. Right. And I, I want him to do that. You just said you've been lifting for 42 years. I don't ever meet people. Well, very rarely. No, you. Do I meet very seldom? Who, will you who meet? Who has them. committed to something for multiple decades? How do I How do I get help patients sustain that? How do you, because it seems like it. Jeff, let me, let me gotta, break the news to you. And this you is not going to, you you're to not going to like this. You can't. Yeah, you got to hand it off to them at some point. Yeah. You can't motivate them. Have you had you people can't. come to your gym who've been successful for multiple decades? Sure. Is there any common denominator that you saw? Or they've got, they're mentally, old they're they're got mentally self, have yeah. their they're shit done. together. Yeah. Not everybody does. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't have his shit together, you <laughs> can't get it together for him. If we haven't learned anything else, we've learned that. Like I said a minute ago, we are narrow casting. Now let me let me let's understand what I mean when I say that. All right, we are broadcasting. We want everybody to do this, but who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Who's going to keep doing it? Somebody needs to ask me how to make their mother lift weights. Because they know it'll be. All right? You can't. <laughs> you may have somebody in your family that needs this desperately, that's, that's borderline diabetic, that's insulin insensitive, that you know damn good and well can turn that around in two months. Right? How do you make them do it? You don't. Yep. You can't. And it's not your place. It's your place to inform them. It's your place to help them if they ask you to. But you can't make them do anything. You can't. You don't get to make other people act like you want them to. This is what's wrong with making drugs illegal. To broaden it out. You don't get to make people act like you want them to. It's not your fucking job. It's not sure. your right. And it's not your ability. And many, many lives have been ruined by people who thought they knew better than you about how to live your life. I wish that weren't true, but it is true. <coughs> you don't get to make your mom go to the gym. 
Now, if your mom wants to go to the gym, you stop whatever you're doing and you help them. Yeah. But you can't load her up in the car and haul her ass <laughs> down to the gym when she doesn't want to go. Unless you just want to destroy Thanksgiving for the rest of everybody's life. Okay? You don't get to do it. I wish you could, but there's not any way to motivate other people. Other people have to motivate themselves. We are narrow casting. We cast a broad net and most people slip through. That's just the way shit is. Once they express the interest, <clears throat> then you can facilitate behavior change. Yeah. But if they're in pre-contemplation, they, they don't even well, every, everybody, consider it. Everybody has an interest. Everybody, nobody likes being obese. Nobody likes not being able to stand up out of their right. chair. Nobody likes that. Of course not. I just wanted to. I just want to get them to taste it just a little bit, and then if, and if, and if I can get them to taste it and, and grab onto that, then I just I want to help them sustain it. And maybe I'm not going to. Maybe they just that's something they always have to take up on. Their Jeff, own. you're a good guy. I understand your motivation. You're a good guy. <laughs> but you it doesn't focus work. real hard. On, upstream. Yeah, focus are, real hard on the you're people. Pissing who, up a rope. On the people who <laughs> pissing, up, pissing up a rope. rope. You put a lot of effort into the people who into the people who will do it and the people who will listen and you can't you can't worry about everybody else. Yeah. Save the savable. That's right. Wish that weren't true, but that's that's the case. 